Hey everybody and welcome to another Jamovi tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to keep with the R train. Yeah, that's right. We are going to be exploring another module that connects you a little bit closer to the R in your life. And this one is a really good teaching tool if you plan on combining Jamovi and R in your stats classes. I think it's very useful. If I had more time, I would probably start to incorporate this into my teaching. But I don't have the time and uh, it's a lot to just learn a new stats program. So, but I know some, some folks out there do both and more power to you. I love it. I love to hear it. You love to, you love to see it. So this module uses the basic analysis functions that come with Jamovi as a separate module that you can use in syntax mode. What is syntax mode? So let's go through this. First things first, we are using version 2.3.16 in this most updated version as the time of recording, okay? So let's talk about this module here. This is the module that I'm talking about, the lovely symbol of R, the, the statistical language, and the name underneath base R, okay? So this is important. We go up to modules and um, we click on that. And of course, something's behind it. So it's really hard to see what I've got. So we go to, um, we can go to installed or available. I mean, every single one's in here. And what we want to find is actually this. I don't have, I don't even have to, I don't even have to search for it. It's right here. JMV for Jamovi, base R, and that's the base R, version 1.1.2, and it's from the three devs of Jamovi, Jonathan Love, Damian Drotman, and Robbie Selker. A simple module which makes the analyses from the stats package, okay, included with R, usable. So the uh, so when you download R and you use R to start without any packages installed, you're not even I'm not even talking about R Studio, just R itself in the console. Um it comes with a base set of functions that it can do, and I'll show you what those are. Usable from Jamovi. So it's taking the base R code, which includes, you know, things like a t-test or an ova, blah, 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 uh, correlations, all that. The correlations that I, did, uh, that I did in the previous episode that dropped on the channel last week showed you C-O-R and then your data in parentheses. So do, do a full correlation matrix with all of my variables. This module is ideal for teaching and learning R when run in syntax mode. It doesn't really work that well if you don't use it in syntax mode. Not that it, not that it's not functional, but as far as a teaching and learning tool, if you're trying to improve your R skills or learn R from uh, in, in a class or just on your own, you're better off using the Jamovi functions if you're not using this in syntax mode because syntax mode is how you connect the um, functionality of the base R to the code itself. So you can see what the code is doing when you do all of these um, point and click kinds of things. So we will put in our, our thing in syntax mode in just a minute as it demonstrates the syntax for some basic but common R analyses, right? So this isn't going to get you to master status R programmer. Uh, leave that thought at the door because that's not happening here. But what it does is connect the code with the function. And that's really important for uh, solidifying code in your mind. Now, I don't, I don't think you have to memorize how to do any of this stuff. You know, all you have to do is keep code books and save those code books and just refer to those code books every time you need to use that. But this is a good way to get the underlying foundation of what it is that you're doing in R or in Jamovi. So I have that. As you can see, it's up there. So we first need to put our Jamovi into syntax mode. So how you do that is you go up to the three dot menu up here, which is very difficult to show you because it wants to go into my other, but it's that one. It wants to go into my other monitor. Um, and it brings up our options, right? So to bring up my results and stuff. And here we go. Here's syntax mode. It's just a checkbox. Most of the time, you're probably going to have that unchecked. If you want to do syntax mode for everything, then why not do that? Um, I just think it's a lot. Uh, it's quite a bit messy for the kinds of analyses that I do. Um, and again, in my teaching, I use Jamovi, but I don't use syntax because I'm not trying to teach them R. Trying to teach Jamovi the statistical concept and R at the same time would be a lot, even for me. So I don't even I don't even attempt to do that. But we're going to turn it on here. And so let me close that. And once we open up some data and work with some data uh, and I'm just going to show you a really quick uh, way to do this. I'm not going to do correlation because I did that already, but let's do a like a t-test or an over or something with one of the base data files. All right, so let's open up some data so we can jump into this base R. Actually, before we do that, uh, I just want to show you what this base R menu looks like. Okay, so we have three t-tests, which are the exact same t-tests that you'll find over here. Okay, but you're going to get the code and you're going to be able to work with the code. It's not going to be as, it's very important. Um, when you have all of the stuff in all of the modules that give you all of the extra bits of data for these t-tests, then these are far, far more robust. If you want to use R, then you'll have to install packages that give you the robust output that you're looking for, you know, beyond just the, the t-test itself. Um, and so base R is going to just be the basic information. You'll see that. I think we'll, we'll try to grab, uh, we'll, we'll do a t-test or maybe we'll do an OVA. And you can see we have an OVA here and then we have correlation and linear regression. This linear regression is a simultaneous linear regression, one, um, one DV or outcome variable, and then as many predictors as you need, um, but all at the same time, all in a single model. Okay. So 
let's open up some data before we make our choice. So we go to open, uh, it's in data library already, and I have all of these modules and some sample data installed for them. So we're gonna skip all of that. And we're gonna go down here and let's do, um, let's do tooth growth. Keep clicking and it keeps going up. That's so weird. Okay, I don't know, I don't like it. All right, so here we have um, length of tooth, um, SUPP, whatever that is, maybe it's suppository. That's not suppository. Uh, I just like calling it that. <laughs> um, whatever SUP is, VC or OJ um, of our 60 uh, cases here. And then a dose, which is 500, 1,000, or 2,000 milligrams, I guess. I'm not entirely sure what this data set is telling me here, but we're going to use it for our base R demonstration. So let's go up to base R, and we can do a 2x2, two two, or 2x3, two excuse me, 2x3 ANOVA, because we've got 2 and 3. Or we could do an independent samples t-test and just use SUP. So I think that's what we're going to do. Um, and so we're going to compare VC to OJ as two different groups, and then we're gonna see what that does for tooth length. I, I, I know this is probably fudging this particular data set, but be that as it may, that's what we're gonna do. All right, so we, here we are, we're in syntax mode. You're not gonna see any syntax just yet because we gotta do the, uh, we're gonna do all of this. So again, this looks quite a bit different from the t-test that you'll find right here because with the t-test that you find right here, is gonna have you know uh, radio buttons for your hypothesis, effect size, um, all sorts of different things, uh, Welch's as opposed to just students T, uh, all sorts of different things, right? So this is just the basic functionality. We have, um, oh, we do have, okay, all right. It's not a radio button, but it is there. Okay, so that's nice to help. That's nice to know. Um, we have our uh, dependent variable and grouping variable. So let's put len in our dependent variable. I'm not gonna put sup there yet because I, I wanna hold off on this and I wanna talk about the rest of these. Um, so we have alter our alternative hypothesis, a uh, non-directional or two-sided test. Um, we could do less than or we could do greater than. I'm just going to leave it as two-sided. Mu here is what mu would be. Because we're doing an independent samples t-test, mu would be zero. That would be the numerator if there were no differences between these two, VC and OJ. So we're going to leave this on by default zero. You may have a different value put in here, but that's pretty much what you're going to leave as default. Um, assume equal variances. Um, so that's a checkbox. That's not a checkbox. Um, so we're going to assume equal variances between VC and OJ. And then confidence interval width is 0.95, which is 95%. It's just, um, it's just the way that you have to put it in for the R code. So let's put SUP into grouping variable and see what it does. So we've got a two sample t-test here. Okay, data, len by SUP, T is 1.9 and the degrees of freedom is 58, right? Because there were 60 and the p-value is 0.06. Alternative hypothesis, true difference in means between group OJ and group VC is not equal to zero. Right? That's all our alternative hypothesis. Not equal to zero. 95% confidence interval is this, which tells us it's not significant at all. Okay. And there you go. So where uh, we have the syntax here. Oh my gosh, syntax mode was turned off. God, it's so annoying. I'm like, where's my syntax? There it is. I, I must have clicked it twice before I closed that window. My bad, all. My bad. So here's the syntax. So this is the for, uh, this is the formula that you use, essentially the code that you use. So here we have, and I just want to go through it because I think it's useful to go through. So in all cases, for any t-test in R, you use t.test, and you open the parentheses, and you say what the formula is. So what are we looking for? We are going to, essentially the tilde here is we are going to regress on, because this is the general linear model. So my dv is going to be, um, regressed on my two SUPs, okay, my two SUP values, zero, one, whatever they, whatever they may be. Data equals data. That's not going to change there. And then you can see here variance equals true. And if I uncheck that, you see where it it's, you see that it disappears there. You don't actually need anything else in this if you don't want. And um, if you wanted to uh, leave a comment, then you you don't have to use um, the pound or hashtag symbol. But I think if you're going to copy this and then plop it into uh, our console or our studio, this would be a good idea. So this is uh, independent samples t-test uh, oj versus vc all right and you can leave that in there and boom there you go um the output also gives you the mean and the, uh, of the two groups but that's that's it okay not enough people in this group to show that they're different our confidence interval doesn't show that and our p-value doesn't show that so there's really no difference between oj and vc whatever those are uh, i like to think of it as orange juice and um what is that called uh, uh the, the veggie juice <laughs> whatever it's called that you find in the store. I can't think of the name right now. <laughs> and so that's how you use syntax mode. Again, you got to make sure that it's on. Oh boy. So when you take off syntax mode, it disappears. Uh, but this is great for all sorts of things. So let me show you what it looks like. What syntax mode did, oh my God, did I leave it on? Yeah, I did. Let me show you what the syntax mode does if we do uh, t-test here, right? So JMV, so this is already changing it, but JMV, and this is, this is the t-test independent samples for Jamovi, right? So you can see this is the base R t-test. This is the Jamovi t-test. And if we put in the same thing, put sup there, and then we regress len on it, 
um, we have that data is data because that's this variable is our len here. And that's this vars or vars equals len. It's the reason why that shows up there. We can put student in there. We can get mean difference. Seeing a mean difference equals true. We can get the confidence interval. CI equals true. We can get effect size. Effect size equals true. The confidence interval for CI ES for effect size equals true. The descriptives desk equals true. Descriptive plot plots equals true. Then we can do our homogeneity test. You can see homogeneity test uh, goes up here. EQV. Um, our normality test, norm equals true, and then the QQ plot right here, uh, QQ equals true, and it'll put on a QQ plot here. Um, and you can see that, uh, you know, a lot of, just a lot of additional stuff is added. Now, you don't need to set up your data in R as descending like this. You can have them come through data equals data on the same, you can have them on the same line and they'll eventually just wrap. You don't have to do this, but you do have to close the parentheses after you're done, right? So that's what syntax mode looks like if you use a Jamovi feature versus a base R, right? So that's base R. So it's a good way to just get people to recognize what they're doing in the code. So that's the base R module in Jamovi in syntax mode. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, or other comments, comments, did I, I must have repeated myself. Anyways, if you have anything to say, please leave it down below. I, I get to all of them. Thanks for watching.